Hello everyone, today in this video I'm going to be doing a review of the Myonix Caster. I had a couple requests for this and I saw a lot of overly positive reviews online so I wanted to see if the Caster truly is one of the best mice on the market. To start off, the Caster has a right-handed ergonomic design. On the right side of the mouse, it has this curved section for your pinky delay which feels really comfortable. The coating on this mouse is a very thick four layer good rubberish feeling. I cannot speak for the longevity of the coating, but it feels built to last and after one month of heavy use, it looks as good as new. The caster claims to support all types of mouse grips, which I found true to an extent. If you have very large hands for an example, a palm grip isn't going to be very comfortable. You're going to have to stick to a claw grip or a fingertip grip. But if you have average to medium sized hands, I believe all mouse grips should feel comfortable as they claim. As for the buttons, there is a DPI switch button behind the scroll wheel that allows you to cycle through three steps of DPI presets. You can choose all the way up to 10,000 DPI, which I find to be a little unnecessary, but it's good to have the feature. The side buttons are placed in a very comfortable position for both claw and palm grip, but you may find it a bit difficult to reach with a fingertip grip. The side buttons and DPI switch buttons use TTC switches and the left and right buttons are Omron switches. This means they're very light and tactile while still having a very long life. The scroll wheel has somewhat predominant scroll steps for games like CSGO, but the scroll wheel does have a bit of a mushy feel and it does sit a bit lower than I like, but it's not a big deal. The mouse cable is a nice braided cable that doesn't seem to drag or resist like other braided cables I've used in the past. The sensor in this mouse is the PMW3310 optical sensor. It's widely used by competitive gamers because of its no acceleration snapping or smoothing. The sensor allows you to select up to 10,000 DPI in 50 DPI increments. I'm a low DPI gamer myself. I play at around 400 to 800 DPI and I still felt it accurate at those DPIs. It's very similar to Zoe Mice. The Mayonix software is very simplistic and doesn't run in the background like some other alternative company software. The mouse can store up to five profiles. All the mouse buttons can be rebound to anything else, such as macros or keystrokes. The liftoff distance can be adjusted, so you have to lift your mouse higher or lower off the ground for it to stop tracking. The caster color settings are pretty in-depth. You can choose your LED effect and color. The LEDs on the Mionics caster are dual zone and very full looking while supporting 16.8 million colors, which is becoming more of a standard now on gaming mice. The LEDs look very nice and every color looks great, but white because it's not RGB plus W. The white has a tint of blue and purple. Lastly, the software has a simple macro settings page. You can create a macro to practically anything you can think of, such as keystrokes, bindings, etc. Overall, I found using the Myonix Caster a great mouse. It has superior accuracy while not sacrificing its comfort. I have 18 centimeter hands and a palm grip is very comfortable. It's honestly probably the most comfortable mouse I've ever used. If your hands aren't abnormally large, every grip type should feel comfortable as they claim. The rubber coating is super comfortable and feels built to last. The only real downside I could find with this mouse is the scroll wheel. It simply just doesn't feel as premium as the rest of the mouse. It's still a great mouse and that's $69.99 it's definitely worth the price. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this mouse, comment below and I'll reply. If you liked the video, like it. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. Thank you.